Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues United. And I am going to start this video with uh, something that I had written, reading this off. Uh, so, uh, and then follow up with uh, something more personal. All right, so I have stated many times that I have studied economics for many years. To this point, I will admit to one fallacy in those studies. Those studies have focused until recently mostly on macroeconomics with some focus on the stock market. This has included studies into psychology and sociology without which one cannot truly understand economics. While these studies have clearly involved no small level of detail, of late I have been delving more deeply into the operations of banks and financial markets. In short, the mechanics of how these entities function. The more delfly, deeply I delve into these details, the more shocked, bored, and angry I have become. The more one understands the mechanics of complex financial instruments, the more astounded and anxious one becomes. That is, if a person has any modicum of ethics, I have known for years that the next economic crash which we experience will be the worst economic crash, not just of our lifetimes, but in modern times as a whole. It will exceed the conditions of 2008, 2001, and the Great Depression. I have known this with absolutely no doubt. Yet, as I continue studying the details of these complex financial instruments, which are often barely comprehensible, the more I understand that this coming economic downturn will involve a complete collapse of the Western economic model sweeping all of us along in the tide of destruction. On many occasions, I have referred to the U.S. economic system as casino economics and a house of cards, referencing the way that banks and financial services organizations invest in one another. This means that when one fails, it results in a domino effect, as happened in 2008 and which we see occurring now. Yet that process has barely begun. The collapse will not occur all at once and then recover. For one thing, all of the tools available to central banks and governments have been used up. This means the next economic crash will take decades to recover from if we ever recover. Any recovery will be measured relative to previous years, just as the performance of the economy today is being measured against last year which was measured against uh, the 20-20-21 performance, where the economy was in a severe downturn. This distorts the view that we are presented with. That view would be far different if the current conditions were measured against 2018 or 2006. Some of us realize that we have never recovered from the 2008 crash. In addition, many allies that we may have once been able to turn to are in worse condition than we are, as with Europe. Other entities have been alienated, as with China, who helped bail the U.S. out in 2008. They have become economic and political adversaries, creating a parallel and competing trade payment system, the BRICS system, which will further the decline of the dollar. That competing system is gaining allies with countries that encompass most of the global population along with those countries producing most of the global production of commodities such as oil, grain, steel, etc. This will leave Western countries, especially including the U.S., with nothing but services, which can be and are being replicated and replaced in other countries, often with higher quality and efficiency, displacing the services offered by the U.S. 
While I make reference to the actions and conditions of other nations, we must understand that condi the conditions of our own future suffering come directly from the actions of our own banks, financial industry, and the Federal Reserve allowed and encouraged by our own government. Because of this, some of my content has been recently and will continue focusing on the complex financial instruments and entities which have created the conditions leading to the gathering economic tsunami we are experiencing. I have no intention of describing these complex instruments in considerable detail, but only offer an overview in simple language. There are many more qualified voices with far more knowledge on these subjects that one can listen to if they want considerable detail on these subjects. My own goal is merely to offer a basic understanding of these instruments and entities and how they interact. For most of us, the details are mind-numbing and so complex that even those who work with these instruments do not understand them, making them considerably more dangerous and destructive. The financial crash of 2008 stands as a glaring example of this. And if you want to understand just how the very people that were engaging in all of this didn't understand it, then watch or listen uh, to uh, The Big Short by Michael Lewis, uh, especially the book. I will warn you, the book goes into a lot of detail that the movie does not include. Uh, and at some points, it's very difficult to listen to for all the detail that is included. Now, I have to tell you that if I am not working, sleeping, or driving, uh, for the most part, I spend all of my time reading, listening to audiobooks, uh, listening to uh, videos, podcasts uh, from people that have a lot more knowledge on these things uh, that spend their lives, their entire life, uh, you know, with economics. Many of them have PhDs in economics uh, or at least master's degrees in economics, uh, etc., some people think that because they put some money into a mutual fund uh, or a 401k and it gains some value or because they can balance a checkbook or they can manage a, a, a landscaping business that they understand how macroeconomics works. And it does not work that way by a long shot. If you cannot understand uh, and just how collateral, collateralized debt obligations or collateralized loan obligations or mortgage-backed securities work or why the Federal Reserve balance sheet is at nearly $9 trillion right now. You don't understand macroeconomics. Now, I'm going to admit here that years ago I was an advocate for uh, capitalism, but I took courses, I read books uh, on business management and uh, economics and so forth, and from the very beginning there was always just something that nagged at me, uh, that told me that this was completely unsustainable, that it was a house of cards. And the more and more I learned, the more I understood just how that nagging doubt was well justified. My constant goal with this channel is to put things in understandable terms so that anybody can understand it. It's accessible 
and I put it in the most humanistic terms, how it affects you and your neighbor and uh, people in other countries uh, in very realistic, humanistic, solid terms, the nuts and bolts. I have done videos in the past on uh, things like, uh, you know, how the stock market is archaic and should be dismantled. Uh, I've uh, gone into uh, different subjects. Uh, uh, sorry, I had to think about the term for a moment. I uh, like capital gains. Uh, so, I and how damaging capital gains truly are. Uh, that again, this is just a, a perpetual cycle that uh, is again unsustainable that strips money from the uh, general economy. So uh, I, I've gone into some of this in the past, but I'm going to go into a lot more uh, detail into more complex subjects in the near future, such as the Federal Reserve and how they drive inflation. Uh, so uh, be ready for that. Uh, you know, I'm going to put it in, in the simplest terms. Uh, and some people will argue with me uh, on different things, uh, such as whether the Federal Reserve is a uh, part of the government or not. And they will bring up the fact that the Federal Reserve I'll go into this in another video, but the federal they'll say the Federal Reserve is a government agency. And I had to explain to them, an agency does not mean a department. Uh, you know, if I hire a private investigator or a bodyguard uh, or an accountant, they become my agent. They are a private contractor working on my behalf. But they are not a government, but the Fed is not a government department. Uh, you think you've got the Department of the Treasury, the Department of Defense, the Department of Homeland Security. That die, so these are departments. They, they're not agents. They're not acting. Uh, they are not private entities uh, hired, contracted, to act on your behalf when they may not. The, and the Federal Reserve does not act in the interest of the general economy. They work on the uh, behalf of Wall Street. But like I said, I'm going to do a different video on that. So uh, be ready for more complex stuff, but put in terms that you can understand. I will offer uh, different uh, references to anybody that wants them if you want to look into it in more detail. You cannot pick up books uh, or read articles or watch videos on uh, economics and finance that are just cheerleaders for the current system without understanding from a broader view uh, just how damaging this system really is. Many of the uh, people that I listen to are, in, ha, are or have been in pl very high places of finance and government uh, that have stepped away from the horde uh, to actually explain how damaging and catastrophic our system really is. And like I said, if you want the references, I will give you the references. Uh, but be ready for some stuff that, uh, that is a lot more difficult to listen to than what I'm going to offer. Anyway, uh, share this video. Talk about these subjects. Keep following, please. If you can afford it, please donate whatever you can to help expand this channel and my presidential campaign. And I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.